Emerging markets have had a tough summer. A lot of them have experienced a capital exodus since May, and this has caused their stock markets to lose more than $1 trillion and some of their currencies to collapse. So what has happened since May? Well, with the fall of Lehman Brothers, a lot of the central banks of uh, advanced economies reacted by printing significant amounts of money. And a lot of this printing had the shape of what we call quantitative easing, which basically means that central banks started buying long-term bonds and hence bringing their prices up and their return low. This uh, has prompted a lot of investors seeking higher returns to move toward emerging economies. The result of this movement of capital into emerging economies has been credit growth fueled by what we call hot money. This hot money has caused GDP in many emerging economies to grow as have their asset prices and inflation. And some of them also have experienced an appreciation of their currencies. Now, the problem with hot money is that it can move as quickly in as out. And this is precisely what has happened since May. In May, Ben Bernanke, the head of the US Federal Reserve, already started hinting that they might be considering a tapering of this money printing. Just the mere possibility of a stopping of quantitative easing has quickly reversed the situation. And now, this capital that has been entering into these economies is quickly moving out. How serious can this situation be? Well, it depends on how much the emerging markets slow down. And the reason for that is because in the last two decades, our economy has experienced a huge transformation, which is basically the importance of emerging markets in the growth of the global GDP. This contribution went from 30% around the 80s to more than 70% today. So basically, if the emerging markets are hit very seriously, that could have a very deep impact. There are very significant differences across different countries and foreign capital addicts like India, Brazil, Indonesia or South Africa might be hit more severely in this crisis than might, for example, China or Mexico. The other thing to keep in mind is that when all these emerging economies were contributing a lot to growth, they didn't need much more basically to attract this uh, foreign capital. But now, to retain this foreign capital, they need more. They need a structural transformation. Still, the potential is there, but the volatility will continue. Probably with the countries that have either a negative current account or high inflation or a credit bubble being hidden.